All right, another thing you can do is loading 300 megabytes of image looks very wasteful as well. Yes. So compress all those images that you are loading. If you're bundling them in the app, compress them as much as you can without losing the quality, you know, find the ideal size, resize them with before bundling them. Mm -hmm. Let's run the app again. What if we resize it precisely for the frame they need to be in? Yeah. And we bundle in the app already with the specific size they need to be. You even crop them differently for 3x, for retina di display, you know, and for the 1x, like 1x, 2x, and 3x. And precisely the size they need to be Yeah. when they're in the bundle, right? Or when you're loading from an API as well, a lot of APIs allow you to pass the frame you expect, and they will do the cropping in the back end. Mm -hmm. But some APIs don't. They will just send you like a massive image. That's fine. You load the massive image and maybe you will keep it in disk. But when you're showing it on screen, you resize it before putting on screen to optimize that as well. Oh, so okay. you, never, you never have that much memory used because you will resize the image precisely for, the, for what you need, right? But resizing UI images, can be expensive too, you know, an expensive operation. Because to resize them, first you need to inflate them into memory and then do the operation to resize them, right? Mm -hmm. So you will use a lot of memory to perform that resizing optimization. But yes. on, if you're using, there's a framework called image IO. They provide APIs that you can resize an image without loading them into memory. <laughs> Oh, okay. You create a, an image source. You provide the kind of operation you want to do there. Like, oh, I want to perform a transform. I want to resize, like scale down. And you can do that. It's much more efficient without inflating that whole image into memory. But if you're resizing a UI image directly, then you need to load into memory and then perform the scaling and then free up the memory. But if you use CG image source, it's just a reference to a source there's somewhere maybe in, on disk for example and you can perform operations directly on that source which is more efficient memory efficient and for ios 15 and above maybe in three years we can use this new api <laughs> yeah <laughs> we can use this preparing thumbnail and it passes a cg size telling exactly the size you want for the image and it will return a very optimized ui image so again, we don't need to keep all of that in memory all the time. It's a very good documentation here as well. Mm -hmm. But iOS 15 <laughs> plus. But it, CG image source, I think it's like iOS 4 yeah. or iOS 5. It's pretty good. Let's see the image framework. Image IO, iOS 4. There you go. Mm -hmm. So resize the images. If you're loading from, from an API and you don't have control of the resizing, you can use CG image source. But if you are bundling those images and you know their size up front, bundle them already compressed because then the app size will be smaller as well. And when using them, you'll be more efficient as well, memory-wise. Mm 